coming up on the Sporting Shed. Today on the show, I'm going to take this blustery day opportunity to head down river and see a few old friends. Also on the show today, we have Stacy, Susie, Melissa, C Dub, and Buddy. But for now, people know that I'm from Northern California, not the one you usually see on TV. There's a big difference between the sun-drenched movie star country down south and my California that surrounds the state capital of Sacramento. Let's take a drive down the river and I'm headed for the town of Locke in a place called Al the Wops. Well, as it turns out, I found a friendly bar stool here at Al the Wop. And while I get settled in, I want you to check out Susie Jimenez. Nobody knows how to spice it up better than Susie. When using spices, here is the number one thing that you must do in the kitchen. Get a cast iron skillet, throw your whole seed in there. Now you're gonna put this over medium heat, but what you're trying to do is toast the natural flavor to come out so that you can get a nice toasty, aromatic feeling. And I say feeling, because you're really gonna feel it when you eat it, and flavor into your dishes. I'm using my hands, I wouldn't suggest that, but you can also use the handle and just do this. You're gonna see when you finally toasted it because you're gonna see it smoking and you're actually gonna see it brown. And then you're gonna start seeing the seeds actually jump. You'll wanna do this with fennel seed, coriander, cumin, dill seed, anything that's whole seeded like this. You obviously don't want to get dill weed and stick it in there because it'll just burn. So put it in a coffee grinder. You still want it to be a little coarse when you use it so that you still get a nice texture to it. So now they're toasted and they're beautifully done. Now they're ready to be eaten. All right, so Susie did her thing. I'm here at Al the Wops. Um, it's a rainy Friday afternoon, so they tend to get a large crowd here. What they're known for is big, juicy burgers and steaks. Um, today, Maggie the chef is gonna make me a bison burger, so I'm heading to the kitchen now to see Maggie. Back here where it all happens, I've got Maggie who's got bison burgers. Now, Maggie, yeah. you don't normally serve bison burgers, no. right? You're doing it for me. And I just for you. I see you have the high mountain steak rub. Yeah. And I would say that you use this all the time, but I'm pretty sure that you know that I brought that high mountain maybe steak rub right there. Maybe, yeah, maybe sure. next time. Yeah. Now, Maggie, how do you like to cook your burgers? What temperature? I like uh, medium well. Medium well? Okay, now I like my burgers rare to medium rare. So I'm okay if there's some blood in there too. I like them nice and juicy. One of the things that people do with their wild game burgers is they don't add fat to them. So they're a little on the lean side. I'm going to get out of Maggie's way for a minute and we'll talk burger because he's got work to do, right? Yeah. It's sure. not just me, is it? No. no. You know, I have it on good authority that my burger is ready, my bison burger is ready, that Maggie cooked. But, you know, when you come down to Aldewa, don't expect to get a bison burger. So when you walk in and say, hey, I want one of those bison burgers that Laysav had, well, you're gonna have to bring your own. The food here is great. It's one of those burgers that you kind of have to, you want to save up calories for because it is so, so good. What? Good? For me? Yeah. Thanks. Do you guys have any vodka here by any chance? Yeah, uh, I'll take whatever's on sale. All right, so behold the bison burger, the Texas toast. <laughs> There's a fair amount of bacon there. Let's cut inside. See what our doneness looks like. Looks perfect from here. That's the way a burger should look. I like my burger to have some flavor. 
Let's give this one a try. Okay. What, for me? Yeah, for you. <laughs> You'll notice I don't eat my own food on my show, but I got no problem eating Maggie's Bison Burger here at Al the Wops in Locke, California. Just a short putt from Sacramento, San Francisco, or any of those other places that I'd rather not be in. Next up, I'm gonna head down to Juicy's about a mile or so from here. Now, the owner of Juicy's, Mark Marias, was on the Dead Meat Show with me a few years back. We went coot hunting, and Mark made coot cacciatore. What, you haven't had that? Coming up next on The Sporting Chef. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. Today I'm traveling down the Sacramento Delta. We've been to Al the Wops. Next stop, Juicy's, and I see by the parking lot, I recognize a few vehicles in here, and there's an excellent chance that I'll have a few friends in here to say hello to. You know, it's a little blustery outside. So here at Juicy's, um, one of my favorite places of all time, forever and ever, I see a couple of guys at the bar, but they're a little shy. I don't know if I can get them out of their shell. While I'm getting acclimated here, I want you to check out Stacy Harris. She has a tip for those of us who eat eggs. Probably everybody at some time or another has wondered if their eggs are good. I know I came from a small family and we would buy eggs at the grocery store and they would stay in there for so long and I didn't know if they were going to be good or not. And now I raise my own chickens, get my own eggs, and there's even a bigger possibility that the eggs are not fresh. So I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to know if your eggs are fresh. Get a big bowl of water, place the eggs gently down in it, Oop, if they float, they're bad. This one is going to be bad. Okay, you can put this one in. It looks like it's a good egg. You ever heard the expression, it's a good egg? That's what it means. And this one is on its way to being old, but it isn't. It's um, kind of leaning up just a little bit, and eventually it would, it, would, it would continue to go up, 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 and you would be like, ah, that's questionable. And then when it floats, you know, you've got a bad egg. There you go. If your egg floats, don't eat it. So here in the Juicy's kitchen, um, I'm about to get out of the way and let Chef Sammy do his work. I see that he has some duck breasts here that have been marinated and they've been brined and they're skin on. So we've got that good flavor from the duck skin. And this looks like an assortment of ducks. I see mallards, I see pintail, and soon I will see Chef Sammy. So here we got some mallard pintail. They've been brined in a high mountain brine and uh, went ahead and, and breasted them out. We're marinating them in uh, soy ginger sauce, fresh garlic, and parsley. And probably only marinating them, I would say, no more than a couple hours because poultry uh, brines really quick and you don't want to get over sweet and over salty. So after an hour and a half, I would say, I'm gonna go ahead and put them on this, on a really high heat flat top here. Cause what I wanna do is I wanna render out some of that duck fat and get that skin really nice and crispy. And you always go skin down first cause you wanna protect that breast meat. And then we're gonna go straight to the char broiler. So then we're just gonna let those crisp up even more. All right, so now for, to accompany the duck, we're gonna do a, a simple brown rice, quinoa, cabbage mixed salad. And we're going to have, here's uh, just some pre-made quinoa and uh, brown rice mix. We're gonna go ahead and toss in these coleslaw mix, which is cabbage, carrots, shredded purple cabbage. Then like to add a little bit of own spice, a little serrano chili, not too much, just enough to let you know it's there. Nothing goes better with Asian flair than a little bit of spice. That and the homemade Asian dressing, which is rice, wine, vinegar, soy sauce, teriyaki, brown sugar, pineapple juice, some chow mein rice noodles. And then we're gonna give that a toss around. Uh, 
right, and this will be kind of just a nice set here. Okay, so after we uh, take the duck breast off the char broiler, we're gonna pop it in a pan, put them in a 500 degree oven for about five minutes or so. So now for our, our duck marinated uh, reduction sauce, we're gonna start with a little fresh garlic. So we're gonna let that get nice and toasty. You don't want to, you don't want the garlic to brown too much because it'll turn bitter. That's about right. And we're gonna hit it with a little little sherry wine. We're gonna let that reduce a little bit. Add some simple beef stock, a little bit of our duck marinade, a tablespoon or two of butter. That butter's a natural thickener, and that's gonna be a perfect reduction. Nice glaze right over our finished duck product. Our nice duck breast here out of the hot oven. And also what I like to do to add to this sauce is see how we got these pan juices. That is, that is a natural au jus. Wow, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Nice, medium rare, sherry butter pan wine. Reduction sauce. All right. What do you want? Right here? Right here is good. Wow. Remember, I want your honest opinion. Are you okay with medium rare? Yes. Good, good. That's not steak? <laughs> that's really good. No, that's really not good. steak. And people say they don't like duck, right? You would think a wild duck would taste kind of gamey. If it, it does, at all. if it does, Chef Sammy at Juicy's didn't cook it, right? <laughs> all right, coming up next, we've got Melissa Bachman that has a tip for you turkey hunters who don't smell so good. When springtime hits, well, I cannot wait to get out turkey hunting. I absolutely love it. But I've also learned little tricks along the way <laughs> that can make a huge difference. Now, one of those tricks, it's spraying down before you go out turkey hunting. Now, you might think, why on earth do I need to use scent killer gold to spray down before I go turkey hunting? Well, it's simple, and I've had it happen to me. If you're out turkey hunting and you have deer out in the field at the same time you've got turkeys come in, which happens quite often, well, as soon as that wind changes, you can bust those deer out and I can promise you, when those deer bust out, there go your turkeys. So try to save yourself a little heartache this year and spray down before you go turkey hunting. That way you won't have to worry about busting out deer and all your focus can be on killing those big gobblers. So far I've had bison and duck and some great tips from Susie, Stacy, and Melissa. Next up, I'm gonna run over to Michael David Winery and see what Chef Juan Santos is cooking up for me. And I suppose I'll need something to wash it down. <laughs> hey, hey, look familiar? Okay, so I made it to Michael David Winery just down Highway 5 in Lodi, California. If you look at all this produce here, Michael David Winery, they weren't Michael David Winery for a long time. It was all about growing incredible vegetables. They were known for their tomatoes. And now, if you think about Michael David, you think about wine, especially that seven deadly zins that you can get anywhere in the United States. But before I see Chef Juan Santos in the kitchen, I want you to check out C-Dub, who's got a great idea on what to do with your elk bones. One of my dad's old sayings when we butchered a pig was, you use everything but the squeal. There's a purpose for every part of that pig. And I've kind of had that philosophy my whole life. And what I do, and we uh, were lucky enough to put a couple elk in the freezer this year, and so when I'm boning it out, I save my long bones, and then I take them outside and I just buzz these through my table saw. Uh, these bones, when you put them in your vacuum seal bags, those sharp edges can cut your bag and you lose your vac. And so I take and I just roll them up in butcher paper. We have our bones all wrapped in our old butcher paper and we're gonna Close our lid, lock it down, and it's pulling the air out as we speak. Here's our uh, elk bones that we just vacuum packed, uh, wrapped in butcher paper so they don't puncture the bag, and great for bone broth or just for soup stock. And just use that last little bit of the elk, because sometimes they're kind of hard to come by. 
one other little tip when it comes to home processing. This old butcher paper is the cheapest counter space you can get. If you're out here butchering like I do right here, I can put that butcher paper down. You know, I can put different cuts of meat on it as I'm breaking an animal down and it saves uh, wiping up the counter. So just another little tip from uh, on how to process your own game. Today we're gonna cook some uh, venison, stir fry, Just throw some olive oil. So the meat, we're gonna season it with salt and pepper and some herbs. Then we're gonna throw some vegetables. We have uh, potatoes, zucchini, rainbow carrots, and mushrooms. We're gonna cook this meat uh, on the rare side, because it's real lean. Throw sauteed vegetables. Then this is gonna be topped with the uh, covered uh, sauce. The sauce is a uh, covered wine, garlic, butter, and uh, flour too. I think Scott is gonna like this. All right, I gotta try some of Chef Juan's venison. You know what? It's cooked perfectly. The sauce doesn't overpower the venison. Chef Juan, we've had him on the show before. He cooked duck last time. Didn't do me wrong with the venison. Get to Michael David Winery in Lodi, California. But for right now, check out Buddy T, who's in Uruguay, showing them how he cooks chicken wings. We've got a bunch of wings, and you can see they, they leave some of the back attached to them. That might be a new idea for your favorite wing place. Did find me some hot sauce down here. Grill those wings off. I didn't know what the deal was about bringing seasoning in here, so I put that high mountain seasoning in this herbal pill bottle. Got it in here, but I don't think it'll been any problem. Whenever you're cooking that chicken, put you some back in there with it. There's good meat up there toward the front of that chicken. Whenever I get back to Texas, that's one thing I ain't gonna miss is them screaming parakeets. You know, it's been an exceptionally great day for me. And I hope you guys enjoyed the ride just as much as I did. Come on back, and I'll show you why I'll have someone else drive me home. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. I'm Scott Laysath, and Thank you for joining me on my own little nostalgic ride um, down the Sacramento Delta. Um, I'm at Michael David Winery now where I think they might have made a big mistake leaving me back here unsupervised with all this great wine. Can you believe it? All of this has got Michael David wine in it. Now, you'll know Michael David, most of you, for their seven deadly zins, but they've got a whole lot more than seven deadly zins. The Petite Petite, Six Cent Syrah, all of the earthquake wines, they're solid, every single one of them. You know, a lot of the wineries, you go, yeah, I like that, I don't like that. Every single Michael David wine, there's not a dog in the hunt, they're all delicious. And they all go exceptionally well with fish and game. If you come here in the summertime or in the warmer weather months, they have a great outdoor area. Um, they've got great food here with Chef Juan Santos. You can, I think, I'll have to check with them on this, but I think you can bring your own little picnic basket. Have your little bottle of wine that you buy in the wine area itself. 
take the kids, great water feature, and of course, they have this really cool, on the outside of one of the tanks, or three of the tanks, they have the um, Freak Show label on the outside, which I don't, I don't know how they do that. It's very cool. Special thanks today to everyone else that helped on the show, starting with all the folks at Owl the Wops and Juisties, and here at Michael David, Stacy Harris, Susie Jimenez, Melissa Bachman, C-Dub, and Buddy, and of course, all of the sponsors that make it possible for us to be here every week. I'm Scott Lace at The Sporting Chef. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, sportingchef.com, My Outdoor TV, and we'll see you next time.